There's a door to every heart, but yet alas, my friend, there's but a single handle. The outside is not fitted with any lock or key, and though the Lord may stand and knock, the rest is up to thee. These are just a few lines of a poem I read as a child. I do not remember the rest of the poem, the title, nor the poet, but they remind me of the most intriguing gift God has given to us, human freedom. According to the Second Vatican Council, freedom is an exceptional sign of the image of God in humanity. It is a gift that calls us to respond to God's initiative of love. In Galatians 2.20, Paul writes, And it is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of Man who loved me and gave himself for me. You and I were loved into existence. We were redeemed in love and we are sustained every day in and through this love. God beckons us into a fullness with himself and we are invited to be perfect like our Heavenly Father is perfect when we direct our human freedom to the will of God. For freedom Christ has set us free, Paul writes in Galatians 5.1. Through faith we are invited, not forced into obedience to the will of God. For this reason, when Pilate questioned Jesus, in John chapter 12, verse 32, and again John 18, 37, we read, For he bore witness to the truth, but refused to use force to impose on those who spoke against it. His kingdom grows by the love with which Christ, lifted up on the cross, draws all men to himself. In reflecting on human freedom as an intriguing gift, I was particularly fascinated by the practical spirituality of Saint Jose Maria Escriva, often called the saint of the ordinary life and founder of the Opus Dei. From his insights on human freedom, I derived four aspects that I would like to share with you in this reflection. 1. Created free. In Galatians 4 7, we read, So you are no longer a slave, but a child, and if a child, then an heir. You and I were created in love and for love. St. Augustine says, God who created you without you will not save you without you. God could have created man in such a way that he would be impelled to obey God, but instead God gave him a profound gift, human freedom, the gift to choose whether he would love and follow God or not. We see examples of this wonderful yet lamentable gift of human freedom played out through the scriptures. In the story of Cain, who took his brother's life. In Abraham, who declared Sarah his sister to Abimelech. In David, who took Bathsheba as his wife while she was still married to Uriah. In Judas, who chose 30 pieces of silver and betrayed his master. In you and me each day, as we choose to ignore, choose not to forgive, choose not to love, choose not to let go, choose not to let God in. The Catechism of the Catholic Church 1736 states that every act directly willed is imputable to its author. 
And that's why God asks Eve in Genesis 3.13, What is this you have done? And later the same question is asked of Cain in Genesis 4.10, What have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Nathan asks the same question to David when David kills Uriah. But this same gift of human freedom, directed to God's will, through the simple faith of a young peasant girl, brought salvation into the world. In Luke 1.38 we read, Let it be done to me according to your word. One woman's freedom, directed towards the will of God, brought freedom to mankind, and undid the knot of another woman's freedom to reject the love of God. Mary chose to unite her human freedom to the will of God, and through her lowly yes, you and I became sons and daughters, and thereby heirs. 2. Freedom to surrender. Doesn't surrender mean you are no longer free? Aren't you now a prisoner when you surrender? Quite the contrary. Take a mother who spends many sleepless hours caring for a sick child, or a dad who sits in the freezing cold to watch their child play sport. Are they prisoners to their child's illness or their child's passionate love of sport? See, the world teaches us that to surrender is to be weak, that to surrender is to accept defeat. And yet, the surrender that God is asking of us strengthens us and makes us victorious. Self-surrender is a consequence of human freedom. Only when we use our freedom to surrender to God's fatherhood are we free to fulfill our vocation in life? Richard Reichert, in his book, The Real Thing, states that the only limit to our human freedom is ourselves. We choose to rob ourselves of the opportunity to become fully mature by choosing to be a slave of another master. Human freedom is limited. The Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraph 1739, states, Man freely sinned, and by refusing God's plan to love, he deceived himself and became a slave of sin. Jesus' death on the cross is the greatest act of human freedom in history. In John chapter 10, verses 17 and 18, Jesus says, For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. Jesus willingly chose to die at the hands of his enemies for our salvation. The sting of death was forever ended. The wages of sin canceled, my debt paid. Even though he could have easily escaped the excruciating pain and suffering. By submitting his human freedom to God, Christ gave us a share in his identity, in his sonship, in his divinity. We are not sons and daughters because of what we do. We are sons and daughters because of who we are. Three, freedom to love. Secular freedom seems to be in a constant intellectual and moral state of adolescence. Where like teenagers, we define our freedom as over and or against any authority. For the world teaches us 
that the more power we can wield over someone, the more power you have, the less freedom for the other. And yet the kind of human freedom given to man is for the sole purpose of love. We exist purely as a gift of love, and we cease to exist the moment God stops loving us. St. Thomas Aquinas says, God does not need us. He didn't create us to meet any of his needs, but we need him to meet all of our needs. If we truly love, we will discover that our own intimate parts lead us to a continuous conversation with the Lord. Our faith becomes a journey of constant discovery and not a destination. Our work becomes an act of love and not an investment that seeks higher returns. For this reason, Jesus said to the Pharisees, Give unto Caesar what is Caesar's and unto God what is God's. Caesar's image was on one side of the coin, and so it was right for the people to pay taxes to Rome. You and I are created in the image and likeness of God. We are called to holiness by the baptismal titles of prophet, priest, and king conferred on us. So then, let's give to Caesar and to the world only what we need to, and to God what is truly deserving of him, a heart that is free to love him. Then our freedom, which is a valuable treasure, a pearl of great price, will not be cast before swine, but will be used to do whatever he tells us. Supreme love calls for supreme sacrifice. Charles Colson, a prison chaplain, writes about his visit to Umaita, a prison in Brazil. Colson writes, Umaita is a prison with a difference. The first thing you see is a clean courtyard with inmates walking around freely. The prison itself is run by Christian volunteers and the number of returning inmates is a mere 4%. So, what is the success of Umaita? The success of Umaita is the prisoner in the solitary cell. He continues, quote, We walked over to the prison's high security area and stopped in front of a heavy steel door. I braced myself for the worst. But when the door swung open, what hit me was not the stench of sweating bodies, but the aroma of fresh flowers. An altar graced one end of the room. Above it hung a carving of Jesus on the cross with a banner that read, We are together. Unquote. The prisoner in the cell was Jesus. The secret to Umaita's success is in that dark, narrow cell. Jesus crucified the power and wisdom of God. The secret to our true freedom can only be found in the supreme act of love by the Father who would willingly sacrifice his Son so that you and I might know who we really are. The secret of our true freedom can be found in the agony of a God who sweats blood, who is mocked, spat upon, beaten and nailed to a tree, so that you and I might know how much it costs. The secret to our true freedom is found in the breath of a God that hovered over the waters of creation and still hovers over us every day, so that you and I might know that apart from the love of God, we are nothing. Four, freedom to participate. Saint Irenaeus, a second century theologian, writes, Man is irrational, and therefore, like God, he is created with free will 
and is master over his acts. This freedom makes him a person and allows him to share in divine life. God allures us to freedom. He does not dictate to us. The Holy Spirit enhances the freedom of human beings so that the more we participate and cooperate with the will of God, the freer we become. In 2 John, sorry, in 2 Peter 1 4, we see that we become partakers of the divine nature of God. Peter, when afraid, gave in to his human nature and chose to deny Jesus. Yet, when this impulsive, big mouthed fisherman submitted his human freedom to the will of God, the church was born, and into his hands were the keys to the gates of heaven given. In surrendering his human freedom to God, Peter became a partaker in the mission of the church. The corporal and spiritual acts of mercy are our handbook for this freedom to participate in the mission of the church. You might say, there's not a lot we can do due to COVID, and that may be the case, but there is a lot we can do. The church offers us an opportunity to be mission partners right here, literally in our own backyards. Pope Francis and the Australian bishops invite all Catholics to join in an ecumenical season of creation. This began on the 1st of September, which was World Day of Prayer for the Care of Creation and ends on the 4th of October, the feast day of St. Francis of Assisi. The church calls us to a time of prayer and action in caring for our common home. The social justice statement of 2021, cry of the earth, cry of the poor, calls us to look more closely at the ecological destruction humans have caused over the years, and it goes on. The cry of the earth is a resounding echo of the cry of the poor, who are most often the hardest hit in any natural disaster, be it famine, flood, earthquake, bushfire, or tsunami. The church calls us to make prayer for the earth a part of our daily prayer. The church calls us to make one small difference to our lifestyle, to create a healthy habit that could change us from within, causing us to make a greater change for mankind, which in turn will make a change for our planet. One small change. Recycling more diligently, using water or electricity more conscientiously, or growing a few herbs or cultivating your own veggie patch this spring could be the beginning of caring for our common home. If we are to fully enjoy the human freedom that God gives to us, not only for our own good, but for the good of others, then we have four things to meditate on and then take action. One, I am created free to live a life that is full. Jesus promises that in John 10.10, 10, I came that you may have life and have it to the full. Two, I am free to surrender. Surrender doesn't mean defeat. It means uniting my own limited freedom to the limitless abundance of God's grace. Three, I am free to love. I come to enfold myself in the Father's arms and remain in his love. I realize my own potential to love deeply and to love until it hurts. Four, I am free to participate in being bread for others. My Eucharistic celebration makes me one with Christ. My daily Amen 
I become blessed, broken for my family, my community, our hurting world, our ever disappearing ecological treasures. So then, what will I do with my human freedom? Will I choose to ignore, choose not to forgive, choose not to love, choose not to let go, choose not to let God in? Or will I choose to acknowledge, choose to forgive, choose to love, choose to let go and let God in? Let's pray together. Lord, I place my human freedom into your hands. You who created me in love and breaks the chains of sin in my life, grant me the grace to surrender to your fatherly plan for my life. May I be a worthy participant in your mission for me. Amen. You want to put the statue away now? You want to move the statue onto the other table? Oh, yes. I just put it on the floor. No. Yeah. You can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Did it cry? Oh, sometimes I'm hopeless, yeah, I, I tell you. <laughs>